What's up, everybody? What's up? So I want to have a brief conversation about the black church. Mind you, some of the things that I'm going to be saying, especially at the top of this video, is from my personal experience. Don't tell no lies about me, and I won't have to tell no truths about you and or your supporters on YouTube. So honestly, I've always felt a certain type of way about the black church. When I was a kid, you know, I used to see people falling out, being very performative. And then when I got older, some of those people actually admitted to me that they was faking the Holy Ghost, faking speaking in tongues. It's a big performance, for the lack of a better word. Um, I actually pretty much agree with Karl Marx is that religion, specifically Christianity, is a form of enslavement to could keep the oppressed oppressed. Even today, you see TV shows and cartoons like Good Times on Netflix, picking and poking at black women for getting down on their knees and praising white Jesus, looking for hope and salvation. I'm a strong supporter and believe that in order to invoke change, it does change comes out of a form of chaos. Religion in itself is not chaotic. It's organized opposition. Um, as a matter of fact, and I want to go too deep into it because certain groups of people have a, a, a bill being passed, but I think Christianity was created out of fear and control of the oppressed people while other religions were made to thrive. There's three religions, the Abrahamic religions. There's Christianity, Judaism, and uh, Islam. Obviously, Islam is uh, taking an L, especially once uh, Judaism becomes uh, protected in the United States of America pursuant to the Anti-Semitic Awareness Act. But let's focus on Christianity. When I was a little boy, I always felt like people were being extremely fake, extremely, extremely fake and performative. Like the other day, I told the story about um, when I was in trouble in school, I would wait until Sunday to participate and be performative like the rest of the people in order to win over my grandma so she didn't beat me. Little did I know at the same time, Mrs. Robinson was in the front row um, with the preacher with no underwear on, <laughs> waving her stuff to the pastor because she was sleeping with the pastor. That's in the heterosexual community from the black church angle. Now, the modern black church has embraced this ideology as to come as you are or don't come at all. Well, I, I take that back. Come as you are regardless. And to me, when I think about that, I'm thinking, well, maybe it means come like if you can't afford uh, church clothes, you can come in your street clothes, you know. But today in this day and air, age, they say come if you're gay, come if you're a drag queen. You can actually be the preacher if you're gay. Look at uh, Larry Reed live. Look at T.D. Jakes and the allegations that was raised against him in Diddy's complaint. So I've never really believed in the Christian religion. Honestly, I'm going to tell you why I, I have PTSD dealing with Christianity and the religion, right? So we see in the Catholic churches, in the movies, um, because it's my only experience in the Catholic churches, how somebody come in and sit next to the preacher and tell all of their secrets and the preacher give them an answer. And then even then they, they present it as if the preacher is doing something with the little boys. So after I seen a movie when I was younger, I was like, well, maybe I could express myself to my pastor. Maybe I can express myself to church leaders. And once I did that, it wasn't about, um, I, I think it was about something. It was about something that was going on in the house and meeting the help and salvation. They all ganged up against me and everybody in the church knew exactly what I had told the first lady. It became a gossip circle and it created a distrust for me between Christianity, religion, and it became a distrust for me in the black church in general. I never forgot that. I, I was so excited to tell someone um, about something I was going through because I thought I could trust them and people gossip about it. And that's what's happening today in the church. Mind you, the epoch of the black church back in the 1960s, the great migration, um, obviously Nat Turner took a violent approach to salvation um, by way and through the, the black church. And then Michael, uh, excuse me, Martin Luther King Jr. took a nonviolent approach and that made the oppressors happy and it further oppressed us. That's what I have to say about that. So when it comes to the black church, it is begotting oppression. It is begotting uh, additional harm against other people. Even today on YouTube, the black church community, I think is the most detrimental. All they do is gossip. 
if uh, say, for instance, if something about me comes to light, there's these fake evangelists that are going to gossip about it, that are going to tell each other about it, that are going to participate in doxing, cyber stalking, harassment. They pay people to do that. And it's just like it's not convincing me that you are living a righteous lifestyle. I believe a lot, not all, but a lot of black Christians are fake as hell. And I'm here just to break it down pursuant to some of our leaders. Now, one can say, well, hey, do not you need to focus on particular leaders in the black church and not the supporters and not the actual people that are just making up the congregation. I'm focused on all of it. And in order to demonopolize the black leaders in the church or the black YouTubers who present themselves as leaders or influential people in the black church community, we have to look at the supporters and maybe they can look in the mirror and invoke change upon themselves. So please hit the like. Let me know what you guys are thinking in the comment below. I greatly appreciate you guys. Uh, greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate you guys. One second. I'm trying to do something. I don't know why every time I go live. Um, Facebook, it makes the video private and I have to go back in and make it public. But no, I'm traumatized by the black church, the whole community. Honestly, I steer away from it. <laughs> um, I think is uh, a lot of them are detrimental. I don't know who to trust. By the time I want to trust somebody and people collecting your business, collecting your tea and sharing it amongst each other. I don't appreciate it. I don't trust it. And, you know, black to me, when I think about the black church, it's supposed to be a way of salvation. I should be able to say it and, and admit to my sins and be supported by the black community or the black church specifically, instead of being gossiped about, instead of being talked about. Um, for instance, if someone in a black church, I share with them, hey, um, maybe I have this issue going on or someone say maybe they they have mental health issues. That's not for you to pick and poke and pry and pick and poke. And it's just like, stop, stop using Christianity to do your dirt and to do your bidding. And it causes more hatred. And then on top of that, it offers black women an extra layer of protection. For instance, Black women, obviously, we're supposed to respect them and they get away with a lot that men cannot get away with. But just imagine they're doing something atrocious and using the woman card and Christianity as a way to get to, to get away with it. There's a lot of black men, black leaders in the church that understand how to manipulate black women that are Christians to believe in them to get away with their harm. And it's just so toxic. I don't trust it. I don't like it. I really don't appreciate anything that was set forth in Black America by the African barbs, barbs that is basically the, the leaders and the preachers and stuff. Me personally, I want to remove myself from anything that came over to America from Africa because it did not serve us. As a matter of fact, if we're taking the Atlantic slave trade into account, why would I want to be socialized, associated with, or participate in any of the practices that came from Africa when they sold us in America? So this is a free form platform to where you're allowed to think critically. I don't want anybody to like hate me, that loved me, or that was on the fence about it, me just because I don't believe uh, in Christianity. And now I was not born in the 60s. I was not born in the 50s. For instance, I think Back then, that was the best time for black people. I'm not saying because of slavery or Jim Crow South. I'm saying black people, black kids, basically they were forced to learn from each other. And we saw a glimpse of that in the movie Color Purple. Throughout all of it, you guys seen Silly and Nettie, you seen Nettie teaching Silly. And that's how black kids used to have to build connections to each other. Now they're building connections to each other because of rap music, because of... Uh, homosexuality in the church, because of gossip, because of all these different things that are not productive to us as a people in society. And again, like I'm speaking for myself. I do not speak for the entire black community. I'm speaking for myself. And hopefully by the end of this live stream, um, I can come up with some solution to, to turn my life around to God and be supported instead of tore down by black Christians. Because as long as black Christian people tear me now, the more I'm going to dislike them and the more I'm going to put it on blast. All right. So <clears throat> let's go to the first person, T.D. Jakes, the first hypocritical leader in our black community that I feel like should be exiled. And that is T.D. Jakes. T.D. Jakes was recently listed as a, um, a culprit 
a financer and a participant in Diddy Freak Off parties. So for those of you who don't know, T.D. Jakes went around YouTube striking all YouTubers who play bits of his sermon in, in that whole, have you ever been swallowed up? He was striking everybody who went in opposition to him and called him out for his hypocrisy and alleged homophobic, excuse me, homosexual behavior in the church. This article posted from December 24, 2023 says, T.D. Jakes, if everything was true, all I got to do is repent sincerely for my from my heart, but I ain't got to repent about this. So that notion right there, if everything was true, all I got to do is repent sincerely from my heart. I think that is a crutch. Uh, that is a Christianity crutch, meaning that you can continue to cause harm to each other yourself and disobey God rules. And so as long as you get on your knees and pray about it, then everything will be OK. Um, I think God being the ultimate creator is too smart for that. Too smart to be falling for these games and these tricks that black Christians do. Um, stand on who you are, stand on principle and carry a high morale compass wherever you go, whatever you do. Don't be on YouTube harassing somebody that you feel like is mentally disturbed or gossiping about people that you feel like, you know, whatever. You don't know where people are. What I know and what I feel Christianity or religion should be or anything God like you shouldn't want to tear anybody down. It's unfortunate that all Christians, from my personal experience, don't do nothing but tear you about each other down. And T.D. Jakes, let me go ahead and read this. He says, days after denouncing an unverified report, casting um, an, an innuendo about his sexuality and accusing him of being a frequent participant at SEX parties hosted by producer and music mogul Sean Combs, popular, no, popularly known as Diddy, Televangelist T.D. Jakes called his accusers liars on Sunday and noted that even if everything was true, all he got to do is repent sincerely from my heart. So when he said this, even if everything was true, all he got to do is repent sincerely from his heart. Well, T.D. Jakes and the Larrys of the world, I feel like that they can do things that they know are not God-like. And so as long as they repent from their heart, they should be forgiven. But at the same time, forgiveness is saying that I learned and I grew from my mistakes and you should continue to participate in those actions. So again, this is almost like an oxymoron statement to sit there and test God, thinking you're going to do whatever you're going to do. So as long as you prayed about it and you continue to do it and continue to pray about it, you're going to get into the kingdom of heaven. Absolutely not. Anyways, Jake's who leads Potter House's uh, mega church in Dallas, Texas, directly addressed his congregation for the first time on Christmas Eve and urged them not to worry about him because I'm good. Would y'all please do me a favor and stop worrying about me and give God some praise and honor and glory. I can I can feel you. I am fine. I'm good. I'm good. I'm the man for the job. I'm good. I'm good, Jake's declared in a public live stream on his Christmas Eve service on YouTube, which has since been privated. Of course it's been privated because he's not good. He pretty much had an admission of guilt that he did that. Um, according to William McCray, William McCray said that Bishop T.D. Jakes was wearing some pink thongs on a Harley Davidson motorcycle while eating peach cobbler. I absolutely believe it. I believe T.D. Jakes got some big old cakes that he liked to get smashed. Um, living in sin, doing poppers and everything and so forth. So yeah, you just can't continue to do that. And his, I, I believe his wife knows about it. <clears throat> I believe his daughter knows about it. And oftentimes they say the preacher's kids in the church end up being the worst because honestly, um, if you look at it from the scope of humanity as a, as a whole, you will realize that sometimes um, the sins or the insecurities of the parent usually manifest itself into the child. So for instance, if the father is gay and hiding it, living a heterosexual lifestyle in public, but down below living a, a lifestyle, then his kids, his kids, kids might actually manifest that uh, gay gene or manifest it to where they can't have kids or anything like that. So when y'all are out here sinning and when y'all are out here doing things, thinking it's fun and fine and thinking that you can continue to do that and just pray about it and everything will be fine. God is going to punish your descendants for that, you know, and the Bible teaches us over and over in so many different um, books that God will punish your descendants for the crimes and the sins in which you committed. Yes, Jesus died on the cross to pretty much save us from sin 
But at the end of the day, you can't sit there and look at like you're Jesus and that you're just going to be cleansed with the blood of Jesus. Yeah, it's going to manifest itself through your uh, celestial uh, genes. And that is through the family dynamic. Anyways, T.D. Jake said the worst that could happen if everything was true. All I got to do is repent sincerely from my heart. There's enough power in the blood to cover all kinds of sin. I don't care what it is. The blood will fix it. But I ain't got to repent about this, Jake declared. So a lot of people looked at that saying, well, you're taking it out of context as if that was an admission of guilt because he said, I don't care what it is. The blood will fix it, but I ain't got to repent about this. So I don't think that there's enough blood to go around of Jesus Christ to fix every single reoccurring sin that you do. Sinning and asking for prayer and praying to God repenting is a form of saying, I'm sorry. I'm sorry means that you're not going to do it again. I'm sorry means you you learned your lesson and you can see clearly that it was wrong. An apology means that you apologize for it and you're going to do it again. So God does not accept apologies. God wants you to be sorry. God wants all of us to feel inferior to him. But if you continue to violate God's commandments, over and over and over and over doing the same thing in a different way, but you know it's the same sin. Um, God is not going to forgive you for that. God is a jealous God. That means that you are putting yourself equal to God or equal to Jesus, um, or, or it's a very abusive relationship you're having with God by committing the same sins over and over and thinking that you can just pray and repent. Look at Larry Reed, all of the men he slept with. That's very controversial. Um, when it comes to uh, homosexuality in the church. Um, let's say, for instance, it's, it's not a sin, which I do believe is a sin <clears throat> to be in the church. That's just my own personal opinion. But take, for instance, it's not a sin. It, it becomes a sin when you're committing adultery. Larry Reed was married to a woman with kids and stuff, having multiple relationships with multiple men, committing adultery. Adultery is definitely a sin. And so he continued to commit adultery over and over and over and stand up there at the pulpit. It just, worse than Fannie Willis, by the way, standing at the pulpit lying, uh, trying to blame everything on race and blame everything, just manipulating, brainwashing the people of the church. And unfortunately, people that are Christians continue to fall for it. Absolutely not. You know, absolutely not. You're playing with God and you're going to go to hell for playing with God. That's why Larry Reed is drying up, but more about him a little bit later. Jake said, uh, all I got to do is step over. All I got to do is step over top of it and keep on going on. I'm not in trouble. I'm talking about the power of the blood. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I have used it and I will use it again, but I ain't got to use it for that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Whenever I need it, it's available to me and it's available to you. And you can have it when you need it, but you don't have to plead the blood if you don't didn't do, do the crime. So again, this is T.D. Jake's continue to insinuate that God is somebody to play with, that you can play with God, that you can keep on doing the same thing over and over. Um, I think he's totally misleading the church. I think him being in that position is for him to get away with his own sins, his own crimes. And I think he's going to be thrown and cast in the lake of fire, no matter what he do. Even on, you know, you hear so many stories about people when they're about to pass away and they're taking their last breath and they're praising God and they're thanking God because they know. And then they're admitting all of their sins and all of their wrongdoings to people right there. Child, listen, that ain't no different from this lady I know named Nita B, who when she was on her uh, unalivement bed, she pretty much admitted to uh, a lady, a very uh, respected lady in the neighborhood that she slept with her husband like 20 years ago. And it caused so much drama. It's like, why would you do that? And you're just causing drama for yourself. You should have been admitted to that 20 years ago if you really wanted to be forgiven. Why would you do that? Thinking that if I um, if I go ahead and admit this to the person who, who I affected, knowing or unknowing me, that God will forgive me for committing adultery. No, you're going to be judged for that on judgment day. Just because you use your voice and admit to it does not mean anything. You're going to be judged for all of that. Okay. And this is why you have to have a clean spirit and a clean heart. What I mean by that is we all sin every single day. 
Okay, I think sin is overrated because everything is like eating pork to some people is considered a sin in certain religions, right? Sin is a little bit overrated. What it is, is what's your character? What's your moral clause? Like you can sin. the Bible say that I should not unalive anybody, but you could very well unalive somebody for a good cause because that person has um, could have unalived you. That person could have hurt somebody younger and you was doing it to protect them. And then you can pray about it and ask God for forgiveness, right? That is something very subjective and God is not dumb. God sees everything. God sees your heart. God sees your intentions. God sees your maliciousness. And I just think for people like T.D. Jakes to get up there and just preaching at a third grade level and not telling people the truth about how sin works and how prayer works and how forgiveness works. Nobody seems to say that in the church, but I'm here to tell you, you can't keep on committing the same sin and praying and asking God for forgiveness. And like, okay, I did this, this day. Who, if I, if I go away this day, uh, then, then God forgave me and I'm gonna go to heaven, but I'm gonna do it again. Hoping that I live another day and hoping I have another opportunity to pray to God and ask for forgiveness. It sounds like uh, it's actually given an oxymoron when you think and operate like that. Anyways, Jake's uh, name became a trending topic on multiple social media platforms out the YouTube channel known as Tough News TV and brought the woman that art loose author in a recent uh, recently set a lawsuit in which R&B singer Cassie accused Colm of break, yada, yada, yada. So he goes on to basically spell out that T.D. Jake's pretty much was um, a participant in a Diddy uh, freak off. A lot of people was taking and catching L's and bullets <laughs> behind that. So there's no actual solid proof beyond the scope that Diddy is affiliated with them or had affiliated with them. And then later on, Diddy actually uploaded a video, which has since been deleted to his Instagram with a TD Jake's voiceover, which made it even worse. Like you could have got any pre preacher, you could have went to uh, and got a Martin Luther King speech and put it over that, and it would have been just as impactful and powerful. I'm sick and tired of these fake pastors uh, putting on this holier than that art voice to justify their actions. It's all giving very performative. I'm sick and sick and tired of it. I do think that TD Jakes is a sinner. I do think that God is going to punish him. Um, I do not look up to him. I don't care how many people you put through school. I don't care how many people uh, that support you, that believe in you, or that just wants to ridicule me for calling you out on your mess. I absolutely don't care. These pastors and preachers need to be called out. And I think that um, people that go to your local churches and your local communities, you need to start looking at these pastors all with a side eye because they somehow in some way are committing some sin or doing something against God's commandment and, and, and even in your face directly in the household and, and hiding their maliciousness in Christianity saying, no matter what I do, I can pray to God and be forgiven countless times because there's enough blood of Jesus to go around. Please stop playing with God. You know, um, I don't know what you guys think or feel. I don't have anything personal against TD Jakes. I myself, I went to one church before. One church is a, um, is a subterranean part of house, but it's in L.A., um, T.D. Jakes' daughter is um, Sarah Jakes is with the guy that's over one church. Y'all know Megan Good was married to um, one of the guys over at one church as well. That The last time I went to church was at one church. And when I went there, they had like a VIP section for certain people and pretty much looked at other people like there was less than. And I seen certain celebrities sitting in the VIP section and it pretty much gave a lot of zesty energy. And then shortly after that, Megan Good had divorced her husband and it's giving. OK, uh, Latoya said these preachers and pastors must be held accountable. Not only that, not only should the preachers and pastors should be held accountable, but not saying you. But if anybody out there know that these preachers and pastors are oxymorons, why are you still following them? Why aren't you holding them accountable um, at a local level? I think, um, and I'm going to answer that question just for me and just from the experience and the information I received uh, uh, from LeVon Trey via his interviews with Tasha Kay and stuff. I think a lot of people get brainwashed. A lot of people want to become the first lady and want that community. It's a community. And I think that community aspect of the black church is what keeps people intact because without 
the community aspect of black church, where's our older, where's our elders going to, what are they going to do? Are they just going to meet at the bingo hall? Are they just going to meet, you know, and, and gambling, they say is a, is a sin too, you know, where are they going to meet? So I think a lot of people stay with the church they was with because of nepotism, because they've been there for 20, 30 years or their family, family went there and it's just a tradition that they must follow rather than not they believe in it. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. All right, moving on. Let's get to Bishop Lamar Whitehead. So we all know Lamar Whitehead has been sentenced, I think, to six or seven years in federal prison for wire fraud, fraud in general, living a pimped out lifestyle. But I wanted to point out the fact that Bishop Whitehead actually is a, a, a sociopath. He This video went extremely viral of him in the church where, you know, he's pretty much worried about how he looks. What people got to say about him, he got laid down in this church. Um, some people say that him getting laid down was a setup, was an inside job so that he could file some insurance claim to get more money. And then he went around and used his daughter and his wife as a scapegoat as to, look what happened to my wife. You think I will let that happen? Um, sir, I do think and believe that you will let that happen. You didn't think about your wife. We didn't even see you go live and discuss um, anything involving your wife and what will happen and how their life is going to be affected by way of your crimes and your sins, which has left you incarcerated. So, um, so for Bishop Whitehead to do what he's about to do to this woman, I absolutely believe that he don't care about his wife nor women in the church. But let's Why they take pictures and they want to be on social media. Take the pictures. 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 Okay, now go over here. Go over here. Grab her. Grab her out. Grab her out. Now you're going to grab, grab her out. Grab her out. That was Bishop Lamore M. Whitehead at his church. And the church is empty. Let's be clear. The church is empty. You got these elaborate seats that are empty. Um, I think, you know, this, this day and age uh, from the Bishop Whitehead to... Uh, Larry Reed, these evangelists or whatever they want to call themselves, whatever extravagant name, bishop, this bishop, they're televising their, um, they're using this popularity and using YouTube to televise their services. Um, he don't care about these people here. These people ain't got enough money to keep them in business. And that's all he care about. Um, it said that he pretty much trashed this church because uh, somebody else got in there that could actually fill seats and praise the Lord. He's in prison right now. And I think that case is still being litigated. I don't know what he's going to do. I don't, I, I think he thinks that because the case is still uh, ongoing, that when they get a court date, that they will take him to the court date. Sir, you're not leaving that sale. You on sale block one and they're going to get you for what you did to this lady. Church in Brooklyn, New York, this past Sunday, where he was giving a sermon and he says a woman who was being disruptive then walked up to him and he said he felt threatened by this woman, mm -hmm. he and his wife and his child. Oh, so wow. Part of this was captured on surveillance video. Let's take a look. Yeah, come on up here. Come on up here. I'm going to make you famous. Come on up here. Yes, Lord. Yeah. How did you feel threatened when you was telling her to come up there and saying, yes, Lord, this is blasphemy? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Woo. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let's pray in the spirit, y'all. You see what I'm saying? He's saying, let's pray in the spirit. You're someone like, like, do you want me to believe that God does not know your heart, your mind, and your soul has been extremely malicious. You're calling a woman up there to cause physical harm to her. And since you're speaking in the spirit, like your spirit is not clean enough to even speak in tones. It's like he just dropped in it like it's a game. Like it's, it's speaking Portuguese or some language that he doesn't even know. And then on top of that, speaking in tongue is nothing clear. There's nothing direct. Anybody can just fake pretend. Oh, oh, whatever. Uh, oh, some of that. Oh, it's, it's just like it's fake. It means nothing is gibberish. It's like literally two steps below um, African-American vernaculars or Ebonics, you know. So, like, this is what I mean by people playing with God. 
how are you going to say speak in the spirit? God would never enter your temple with all that malice in your heart. And you want me to believe that God blessed you in that moment and God came to you and gave you the gift a gab to speak in tongues right here and there. Like, come on. If anything, you're more like speaking slither slithering language like Harry Potter, you know. Okay, somebody said, how do you know what he care about? So right here earlier, they said, the people on the clip said Whitehead leading a woman out because he said he felt threatened by her. How did you feel threatened by her when you're telling her? Part of this was captured on surveillance this. video. Let's take a look. Yeah, come on up here. How do you feel threatened by her when you're saying, yeah, come over here? That's sarcasm. That's mischief. That is problematic. This is not godlike. You're telling a woman to come on up here. You're going to make her famous. And she's yelling and she's doing things that is considered to be disruptive. If he felt threatened, the people should have escorted her out when she was back there instead of telling her to come up there to cause further harm to her and to grab her physical harm at that. That is malicious. His heart is not right. His heart is not pure. Because if it was, he would, he would ask her, what's the problem? Can you come up here? Do you need prayer? How can I help you? Do you need to speak to God? Do you need to change your life? He's not saying any of that. He's been extremely malicious. And again, God does not enter into your temple if you don't have a clean heart. I don't think none of these black Christian preachers, pastors, or most of the people in the church itself is clean enough. Like they're gossipy. They're, they're malicious. They don't care. Come on up here. Dinner. I'm going to make you famous. Come on up here. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Woo. He's saying, yes, Lord. Woo. It's like, come on. Like, are you really going to tell me that his temple is righteous enough for God to enter it to speak in tongues? Like, this is Cap. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let's pray in the spirit, y'all. And then he walked towards her, uh, like, oh, but that, like, come on. Like, you really think that he caught the Holy Ghost? You really think that God is, spe he's speaking in tongues because it's a message from God? Shata masi, roko shenemala shata baba. Hey, glory to God. Now remove her out of here. Now move her out of here. Move her out he of just, here. He just said, come up here. Praise God. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Now move her out of here. Move her out of here. Like, come on. Yeah. Amen. Come on, let's give Jesus a round of applause, y'all. Now, after this happened, Lamar Whitehead was taken to the police department, and so was this woman. They were both questioned. Whitehead was later let go, and the woman was charged with some misdemeanor crimes. Then, Lamar Whitehead... That's gaslighting. You know, that's just like a dude in the streets can gaslight a woman, and the woman is being so... She's so gaslighted and so triggered and can't control her emotions... But he's such a sociopath, the way he can sit there and act cool, calm, and collected and tell a false story while she's acting all erratic, right? And this is a prime example. Like, take Christianity out of it for a second. Take them two out of it and just look at it. Like, ain't nobody protecting black women. The black men are not. White men don't care. So why why would they listen to her if she's acting erratic and, and all of this stuff? They're from a different culture. They're not going to take the time out to listen and understand that this woman is just so triggered and traumatized. That's why she's acting away. But Whitehead is playing this game because he's used to talking to police. He's the feds himself. He's used to getting away with things. He's already been in prison, so he knows how what to say and how to say it and how to do it to get away with crimes and to make himself seem innocent. Just look at what he just recently did. Ed held a press conference talking about the incident. Everybody keeps saying that I invite her in the pulpit. You have to be a minister to be in the pulpit in my church. He said, everybody said, I invited her into the pulpit. You have to be a minister to be invited in the pulpit in my church. So... 
we just have you right here where you told her to come. And not only did she not come, you actually went out towards her to further antagonize her. This is why he's in prison. God is punishing him. Okay. And I know he probably think he feel like Jacob, but no. Okay. You, 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 you're not, I don't know what it is. He's such a narcissist. He's probably still have all of these followers that believe in him, that believe in his ministry and looking at him like, oh, he's in the lion's den, collecting money or whatever. Like he is a bad person. And I think God sending him to prison for seven years is pretty much giving him another chance to reevaluate his life. And hopefully he won't get out and be the same person. Don't drop the soap, sir. So she came on the side and she began to yell at me. She began to cuss me out and say whatever she wanted to say. I let her say what she wanted to say. And I'm going to be posting more video because you guys didn't see the video inside of the church. What you guys don't see on camera is that she started to walk back to leave and then she spit back around. And she came back after my wife and my daughter. So I have my wife and my daughter. Isn't that the same thing he said when those people came and laid him down? That's why I'm not going. He's using. <clears throat> this is a typical um, misogynistic man. To use black women, to use women, period, as a shield to justify why you took some egregious action. That's why I don't believe when he said that somebody came and robbed him during his church live on camera. I just feel like it was a viral moment for him. And we supposed to believe him because he said, my wife and my daughter, your wife and your daughter was not the focus point. Your wife and your daughter was not right there. Um, I would be interested in interviewing his wife, honestly, because she's probably going to need the money. She's probably sick and tired of him and she probably need a break from him. She probably need to move on with her life without him. He only used his wife and his daughter to a black woman and a black girl to escape liability for his sins and his crimes. That's crazy to me. 10 months old, sitting there and she came and said, and now you, you're a liar going towards my wife. And that's when you see her walk in front of me going at my wife and my daughter and I grabbed her. Everybody saying that I choked her. No, she was not going at your wife and your daughter. Again, this is that's that's sad how he just used his wife and his daughter like that. You're a liar, sir. You are a gaslighter and a manipulator. Like again, like I said, he's been in white people custody for so long. He knows how to talk to them and manipulate them. Worse than a politician. They say he was sleeping with that uh big white dude and promising that dude all kind of money and all of this stuff and using Eric Adams' name. Eric Adams took the key from the city uh from Diddy, but he never addressed his ties to Whitehead and why he was named in a lawsuit as a, a alleged culprit and co-conspirator with Whitehead and his crimes. How can you choke somebody from behind? Now, Bishop Whitehead says that Perfect. he was actually set up by the woman and some other people to create this ruckus. And this all happened after he was robbed at gunpoint in the very same church uh, earlier this month. So joining me to discuss this is. So twice in less than a month, he blamed he blamed his sins, his lack of competence, his 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 need to violate other people's civil rights and um you know, uh, rights in general on his wife and his kids. So shout out to her for leaving him. Um, again, I think, uh, you know, she's, she probably need the money. So she might want to sit down and interview with somebody to come out and create her own YouTube channel, tell her own story. I'm pretty sure you get a million views. Attorney Bryant Camarillo. Uh, Bryant, welcome back to Sidebar. We appreciate you coming on. Uh, tell me your thoughts on this. We have the surveillance video from- Thank you for that information, D. I definitely am going to research what's going on with his wife and see if there's actual allegations coming from her of abuse. I do not know that, but I'm going to research that. So make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel. Okay. Appreciate you. Different angles showing what happened, but we also have him saying- Oh, you want to come up here and preach? Come, come, come. So what are your thoughts after seeing the video and listening to Bishop Whitehead's press conference? Well, if I'm representing, and thank you, by the way, for having me on your show, but if I were representing the uh, the woman, my argument would be, hey, he invited me to come on stage right. and I took advantage of that. And I wasn't threatening anyone. I wasn't assaulting anyone. And therefore, his manhandling of me, grabbing me by the neck was unjustified. Uh, now, if he were to get charged, 
uh, I would argue, uh, representing him, the pastor, that, hey, I felt threatened. And I think he says that I felt threatened. So that video kind of works both ways. There's things that help her. There's things that help him. And you can see where she goes off. Yeah, it's it's a lot of gaslighting, a lot of gaslighting. But again, um, you know, as somebody that's in a black church, we're supposed to kind of look at Bishop Whitehead like you, he's literally committing a sin in the church by lying. You're lying in the house of God. You're at the pulpit lying and starting problems. We don't like I, I don't appreciate that, nor do I respect it. The church is supposed to be a sanctuary. You're supposed to be able to trust the pastor. You suppose you're supposed to be able to talk to, to the pastor about anything and trust that the pastor won't go and gossip about it to his wife and everybody else, but you can't trust any of that. He's on live stream lying in the house of God on and manipulating the factual allegations and the actual concrete facts that we all see. He's a sinner. He continued to do that. And still to this day, he won't take accountability for anything. So again, Bishop Whitehead is another one that can sit there and pray to God. All he won't think that there's enough blood of Jesus for you to overtly lie in front of the world to save yourself from criminal liability. And then while you're praying and asking God for forgiveness, you're still committing crimes thinking that the law is not going to catch up to you. And no matter how much you prayed in your cell before you went out to jury trial, before you decided to testify, no matter how much you prayed, no matter how much you prayed that you don't get nothing but two years or get no time or that you get released, no matter how much you prayed, God did not answer those prayers because God got tired of you asking him for the same type of relief. God relieved you and forgave you when you lied. You, you lied on your wife. You used them as a as a decoy. You pretty much probably committed adultery. You are a sinner. And for that, you deserve to be in prison. Okay, his moral compass is off. D said the wife has left him. Yes, 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 because he was abusing her. So I'm, I am going to do more research on that. Keep in mind, the people that I talk about here, they're up for grabs when it comes to research and extensive deep dive Carmen San Diego style videos <laughs> about them. So we all seen Larry Reed and this white pastor named Shane Perry uh, get into it um, on Instagram and on YouTube. And Shane Perry is one of them other pastors that like to sit up there and, and say things about homophobic. Home he likes to say homophobic things to get banned off the internet. But as quiet as kept, there's been allegations about Shane Perry's sexuality for a very long time. So for him to sit there and call Larry Reed homophobic things and, and, and stuff, it's like he's another one that's drying up, losing his mind. He's another gaslighter and a manipulator right now, currently in Puerto Rico, talking about he's a retired, like he's a he's a disabled vet and he need to access this and that, getting all of these tattoos. It's almost like he's having a midlife crisis getting away from Atlanta, giving, getting away from his family, literally trying to beg people to export his car from Atlanta, Georgia, to get it shipped over on a plane to Puerto Rico so that he can have his car there instead of buying a new one or whatever. He's literally off his rockets and quite as kept. They're saying that he's doing heavy drugs down in Puerto Rico. And God is punishing him as well because like, He's drying up. And then on top of that, he literally cosplay as a black preacher, as a white man speaking in front of a black congregation. When you go to white people churches, they don't be with all of that heavy preaching and acting like a black deacon. They just preach their regular word of God. They get straight through it. White folks say if, if church, if, if the service started at 11 and we're going to be out by 12, they out by 12. And that's why I actually prefer to go to white people churches because I know what time I'm going to leave. Black people have you there from sun up to sun down, and then you got to come right back on the same day. And then on Wednesday, Wednesday night Bible study. I got tired of that. But to each his own, I see a couple of comments. Thank you so much for being here, Natalie. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel. Where is your shirt talking about the church? Um, this me having no shirt on in the comfort of my own house while you seen that get hot flashes worried about me is no different. It's actually no, no, it's, it's way better than a Larry Reed or anybody. Um, preaching with them allegations and things that are going on with them. Okay. I never said that I'm a preacher. I never said that I believe in Christianity. I actually think Christianity is an abomination, which is what drew you into this video from the title itself. Okay. Um, beautiful God watching everything you do. Bless blessings forever. Beautiful God and Jesus love you forever. Teach everyone, you know, and don't know. 
That's what I do. I'm a very spiritual person. Asking me, where is my shirt while I'm talking about the Bible? Well, when Christianity was invented, I don't think they had the cotton gin. I don't think they had the cotton gin. I don't think people walked around with clothes. People could afford it like that. I don't I don't think so. Medieval times. There was a time period when when Christian when religion and, and God existed where people was exactly stripped but naked. Literally. Look at Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Isn't it true that they both were but naked? And then they realized it once. Eve bit into the apple and, and she had enough knowledge to know, hey, I'm naked. Oh my gosh. And what we can do as far as SEX and stuff. So am I a sinner? Am I wrong for having my shirt off while doing a live stream when it's quite natural? You're born without a shirt. You're not born with a shirt on. You're wanting me to conform to this society standard of put on a shirt or this is how you're supposed to show up to church. I, because I'm talking about and having a conversation about the black church, you want me to be in the suit and tie? I'm in the comfort of my own home. If you don't like it, you can leave. But name somebody who was born with a shirt. And you yourself, did Adam and Eve, when, when God was talking directly to mankind, weren't they butt naked? Yeah, thank you. Um Exactly. I appreciate you, Sandra. Thank you guys so much. Please hit the like, please hit the like and subscribe to this channel. And the reason I keep saying that is because this video is live streaming here, but it's going on my back. It's going on my actual channel. Um, my new channel. But anyways, let's get back to Shane Perry. Um, cosplaying as a black preacher. Um, sir, this is nothing but black people out here. I don't even know what gave you the right and the comfortability to do this just because you're porking and a black woman and have biracial kids does not mean that you get to present to be your to be a leader over all of these people from a different nation. And again, all of these people here are, I, I want to say, are sleeper cells and looking for somebody to lead them. And I just don't believe in that, you know. So I, I just think this is cosplay and this is actually comedy. Come on, put your hands together. Let's give the Lord some praise. Hey, Amen. Clean look back at me and said, Shane, I do have on pants. If the lights are out when you preach, at least we can see you. So he looks like Paul uh, Wall, the rapper that they embrace. And now I guess he's the Paul Raw preacher. Okay. Um, and again, um, God is tearing him up. He has lost a lot of weight. He don't even look like this no more right here. He looks zesty as hell, like, like he's, you know, butt broken or something when it comes to LGBTQ plus and trying to blame it on Larry Reed when he's a part Amen. of the man. So. Certainly we give honor to God tonight. Amen. We thank God for the presiding bishop, Bishop Charles Edward Blake. Come on, let's give the Lord a praise for our leader. And I want to personally thank him for this opportunity. Certainly, we thank God for the general board, to the board of bishops, to Mother Willie Mae Rivers, to all of you God's people. I want to thank my own pastor for giving me the night off because he's my boss, allowing me to preach tonight. My mentor, my father, Bishop Peter Wren Sr. Thank God for him. Amen. For my own wife and my son. Praise the Lord, Shane Jr., Latoya Perry. Thank God for them. And we got one on the way. Amen. You know, in Christianity, you know, it was it came from Africa with the bards. You know, the bards are gatekeepers and way shores of um, African-American or African philanthropies, African history, African culture, hymns. And all of this other stuff. Let me. You know. But I just stopped by to let you know tonight that God has still given you a dream. And I don't care how bad it looks, you okay, can Martin. dream again. The text says, when the Lord. Now, I like this because he did not say if, but he said when. First thing. You know what this reminds me of? You know, <clears throat> it's already alleged that. You know, the Bible is has been rewritten, interpreted so many different ways. For instance, 
the Bible that a lot of black women and black people that I know growing up, they read the King James version, especially black women. They read the King James Bible, but they totally missed out and did not read demonology where King James pretty much hated women. And then the slave masters, they would read the Bible and interpret it in a certain way and mannerism in which made us inferior. And it's just giving y'all in the slave master preach is already hard enough for the average person to comprehend the Bible, let alone have somebody else coming up here to interpret it in their own manner. I think that this is wrong. I just think the black church is the called the black church for a specific reason. I'm not saying to, to ostracize him and that he's not welcome, but you're positioning yourself as a leader in the black church. This looks like a slave plantation to me. I don't know what y'all think. The thing I want to tell I mean. you tonight is it's not a matter of if God is going to do it, but it's a matter of when. I want you to understand that there are two wins when it comes to God. There's a spiritual win and there's a natural win. The spiritual win is when you release your dream to God. When you pray and dare to dream greater than where you are. The second win is when it manifests in the natural. The first win is the most important because you must understand that God is an eternal now. Albert Einstein calculated. You know, and I like to say, you know, these preachers no matter the race or whatever, they say a lot of things that give you hope and they say a lot of things that you want to hear. For instance, when you have a dream um, to do anything, you have to make, you have to put action into it. The way these preachers preach, they lead you to believe that all you got to do is pray to God and everything will come to you. No, you have to put action. You have to be actionable. Like, I have a dream to get back into Hollywood to get to do a series regular role on the TV show or to be a lead in a movie. There's things I have to do that the average person don't know. I have to take new photos. I have to get those photos approved by representation. I have to get on the sites where where the whole community submits and, and, and look for actors. I have to get proper representation. After that, I have to be called for an audition. I have to rehearse the material. I have to go in. I just cannot sit here and pray and not do any of those microscopic steps that it takes and is required to accomplish the dream and think that somebody is just going to walk up to me and solve all of my life's problems and do all the work for me. You just can't do that. And as Christians, this is the biggest hypocrisy. You understand what I'm saying? It's like Christianity, pretty much like Karl Marx's famous indictment on religion is the <laughs> opium of the people because Christianity, it pretty much gives the oppressed false comfort and hope, obscuring the causes of their oppression and reducing their old urge to overturn the oppression. You're still oppressed because you're not putting in the work to accomplish that. You're not taking any actionable steps. You just can't sit there and pray. This is why I say it's at a third grade level. You just saying everything people want to hear. You got to pray to God and give up all your dreams, but you're not saying, but you got to put in the work. Oh, no, that's not my job. You got to go to a motivational coach for that. But aren't you, as, as somebody in the pulpit, aren't you supposed to be the motivation? Aren't you supposed to tell me exactly what to do? Aren't you supposed to give me the answers and the salvation instead of, instead they teach it like this at a third grade level without articulating themselves about what they mean and what it means to be fully in, in intertwined with God and to give your dream up to God. They want to just say these boilerplate statements, knowing that it, it is not the full truth. And therefore, if you know that in order to accomplish a dream, you have to take actionable steps and you're not telling the people, you're misleading the people. And in a sense, you are a liar. You understand what I'm saying? You like me, if I'm a preacher, if I'm whatever, I'm going to give you all the tools necessary for you not to only succeed, but for you to be in my position as well. Hoping and praying that because I'm doing things righteous, that God see that and put me in a higher position. So by the time you get to where I'm at, I'm on a whole nother level. That's some, that's a righteous person. That's how you get your blessings. 
there's not nothing that I know or that I can do that. I mean, sometimes the game must be sold. I get that, but you're in the house of God. Is the game not being sold? Are they not going to ask for offerings and collections? What are you paying your tithes and your offering for? Because somebody told you something to make you feel good about yourself. Shit, is this why Cleo, you know, did what she did? Um, only pray for discernment. The rest is one on his, was oneself. Exactly. Exactly. Because God give you the freedom of choice. You got a choice to pray to God and ask God. And God can say, yes, go ahead. I give you the right passage. And this is what I mean by you got to be ready for the opportunity. You can sit there. You can pray manifestation or whatever you believe in um, to be this big person or to be this. God is going to put the right people in front of you at the right time. Is it the right time, though? Because did you take the actionable steps that's necessary to prepare yourself for that moment? Because you're going to miss out on your dream. The biggest misconception that um, we have as American is that um, opportunity only comes once in a lifetime. <clears throat> opportunity, whatever your dream, your ghost is all around you. You know, it, it, you got to understand the six degrees of separation. Like if I know somebody... If I say, for instance, my dream is to work with James Cameron, I'm pretty sure I know somebody who has a first degree, if not a second or third degree relationship to him. Let me nurture that relationship to ask to get in and in, in, in to be bigger and better. <clears throat> and this is where the devil come into play. This is where I find difficulty. This is where you need to pray. And this is where you need to meet people that are genuine with great intent that doesn't compromise or want to compromise your moralities and your values in order to get to where you're going. And I just think these preachers are not necessarily preaching that. Again, just like I showed you with T.D. Jakes. All I got to do is pray. It's enough blood of Jesus. No, you're not telling the people that once you pray about it and once you ask God for forgiveness, you're not supposed to do that no more. And they like spreading this propaganda in our face. Look at Andrew Catwell. First he gay, then he ain't gay. Then he gay again. Now he, now he only want a woman. It's just like, they let him go viral every single time he decides that he ain't gay. And we know you're a pillow princess. You're lying and you're going to get your back blown in that same night you told that lie. The speed of light at 168,000 miles per second, 700 million miles per hour. He calculated as you come to the speed of light, time slows down. Now, I don't know about you, but the Bible says that God is light. So in other words, whenever I come in contact with the presence of God, I come in contact with the God that is an eternal now. Look at your neighbor and say, I may not have received it yet. It's just, he's, he's saying all the right things, all the right things. For what? All the right things, but the wrong things at the same time. If you're going to preach, that's why I hate them Bible thumping preachers. How are you going to give me a quote out of Revelation and then want me to flip the Genesis and then want me to flip, flip the first John, second John, then Corinthians? Get get up out of here. You just, you just, you know, that's why I don't trust no Christians. Don't trust none of them. All they do is want to grip your time, your energy, and your attention. Last but not least, before we get up out of here, please like the video, like the video. If you decided to support the channel, that would be a great time. Let's get into this with Larry Reed, the gayest preacher of them all. Okay. <clears throat> and again, <clears throat> it goes back to what I was saying about T.D. Jakes, um, about how you're praying and asking God for forgiveness, but you continue to do the same sin over and over. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure, <clears throat> sorry about that. I'm pretty sure Larry Reed has prayed and asked God for forgiveness on multiple occasions with multiple men over the years for committing adultery. Like adultery is a deadly sin. Like there's no forgiveness for that. You made a conscious decision. To put your spirit in him, to put your spirit in her. And it ain't nothing but men that's coming out. You had an arranged marriage. I don't understand why you still have so much power and influence over black women, who is mostly your audience and mostly your congregation. Because let's be clear, your congregation is online. 
knowing that their money that they've been giving to you has been mis heavily misappropriated for lavish parties and being spent on men for you to enjoy yourself with. And yet you still have followers and supporters. This is why I, I, I mean, <clears throat> I'm only one person. But at the end of the day, like, this is why I say there's no help for the black race. Ain't no way in hell. Like, you are a true Christian living right by God. And you see somebody like Larry Reed committing deadly sins. And you still go back to him, despite how many victims come forward. And then you got people like the St. Hudson's and all of these other people that are advocating on behalf of Larry Reed. And to me, it just feels like they're auditioning to be his next, uh, you know, I guess, meal or to, to get his spirit in them before he get up out of here. You know, it got to be something serious more than a click and a view. And even them advocating for him and advocating and cheering on his sinful behavior and trying to lie and disguise his sinful behavior for the sake of money, for the sake of click and views. They are sinners, too. They're going to have to answer for that. Like, I, I wonder if they get off live streams. Do they pray um, to God knowing that they are capping for individuals? Like, let's take Christianity out of it. Let's take the fact that Larry Reed is a preacher. Let's take the fact that they're doing all of this on the Christianity and they're just regular people. People do that every day. But why you got to hide under Christianity? Why you got to continue to mislead the people? I mean, everything I'm saying in this video is with genuine. I'm being genuine, but the, the, the large majority don't want to hear it because they're used to being deceived. And I just really don't appreciate that. It says is. And, and if you got people like Larry Reed that knows that Christians are stupid and easy to deceive, what do you think the politicians and the mad scientists that plot and plan uh, the next 25 to 50 years of what they want America to look like? They feel like they have us in a bag. And so Larry Reed is participating in this propaganda against black people. So many different people are, and I just don't appreciate it. And because I speak out about it, this is why I'm attacked so much by the devil. People that claim to be Christians, people that claim to worship God, they want you to see the bad in me because when I deliver messages like this, they don't want you to receive it. But here's Larry Reed spreading his seed internationally from Dubai to the soccer players to grown men. The only person I sent out was to Larry. So basically it was a, big, a video of you pleasing yourself? Nah, I was there with a big orgy, but they cut out the orgy and they only put the two guys in it. So we had like two transgenders, four bitches, and two guys. It was a big orgy. So they put Sodom the part the only when I was fucking around and having fun with the guys. And they leaked it and shared that. So at that point it's like, Okay, my my shit is out there. Let me support the um, LLC. What is it? The yeah. LGBT. I'm community. gonna keep. I'm gonna support them. Sit your ass down. Okay. So, so you were having sex with men. Yeah. While you were with Larry, but you just weren't having sex with Larry. I had sex with Larry after mm. a while. He had to earn it. Okay. He definitely oh, had to earn Lord. it. Did you guys use protection? Yeah, because I know he has HIV. It's not a secret. Oh no. It's not why. Because Damn. So in all fairness, I think that was recently corrected to be HPV. Um, and in a nutshell, HPV is pretty much uh, you got everything and something else. Like I, people that end up with HPV, what happens is they get these big old holes in a booty hole or something. It's just like the skin. It's like the flesh starts eating you from the inside out, whether it's the mouth, the booty hole, the every. Ugh, ugh, I remember. God bless us. So I had a cousin that died with HPV. Um, didn't have no, she went to the hospital, didn't have no, no blood in her body. Didn't have none in her body. And she was still living. I guess it was the crack or whatever that was keeping her alive, but you know, she couldn't hold her bowels. She stank, smelled like a rotten chicken egg. Um, and they always say it's cancer related or whatever, but no, HPV is, is a flesh eating bacteria. That's pretty much what it is. So there, in, in theory is worse than HIV because I don't think that there's really a cure for HPV. If there is, um, sorry for me quoting it, but obviously I'm not educated on it because I know how to spot it because I've seen enough pictures, but obviously, you know, that's something that I don't wish to have to 
ever educate myself on to the extent to where I know anybody that live with it. I'm sorry. I just, I just personally cannot deal with it. Cause I used to go there and I saw pills and I'm not a stupid person. I was with nurse practitioners and, and nurses. So I know what is the AIDS mm -mm. tablet and what is a prep tablet. And if you could, if you could see which I'm going to give you after and you could release on your, okay. um, <laughs> on your, you know, foundation that me and him talking and I'm saying like, no, nah, we're not finna going to have sex, my friend. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta, um, let me be on prep at least. You understand what I'm saying? So I did manage to get my hand on the prep shot, not the tablet. Okay. From his doctor. And at that prep shot, I don't know what that is, but again, later on he corrected it and said it was HPV. Said Larry has HPV and gave him and his wife HPV. And he's still trying to preach and be at the head of the head of the church. And oh, this is so disgusting. To even think, I remember I even when I was living in Bru, I was um, I lived in Bruford, Georgia, um, for a little bit, and I went to a church, and there was a lot of women there and a lot of men there, but all the men to me, it just all the men ob obsessively hugging each other and brother, I love you and all of this stuff. It just to me, it just gave that they was all sleeping and laying up with each other. That's what it looked like and felt like to me. You know, they will hug the women, but they will hug the men in themselves even tighter and playing fishing trips and all this stuff. At that point, after like two, three months, and I was prepped out, you understand? And I spoke to um, one of my doctor friends who I have tangled men with. I was like, could I? If you had it's like, yeah, you could. You, you good. Because I went to get tested and stuff, and like the, the prep was at the highest, so it's like, no oh. way I could get it. Okay. And so you you had unprotected sex with him? Second time. Okay. First time you used a condom. Yeah, first time. Did he do you or you did him? Nah, I wanted him to feel like he's strong. So you let him do <gasps> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like looking at his dick is like about five inch. Like mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> that is a dirty low down shame. Oh my gosh. But listen. I just really wanted to do a quick video and point out a couple of the hypocrites in the church. Somebody mentioned um, Archbishop Bernard Jordan. I definitely am going to do research on him. I'm going to do research on Lamar Whitehead's wife to see if, when she left him and if she said anything, she should have been left him. Um, ooh, it's very problematic. But anyways, in a nutshell, my whole thing about this whole the black church is an abomination it really is. I'm sorry. The black church is not the same black church that, that existed during the Great Migration. It definitely isn't the same black church that supported Nat Turner. Um, it is the same black church that supported um, MLK, that takes the nonviolent approach and continues to begot oppression and feel like you can pray to God no matter what you do. You can pray to God. You can just give it all to God, but I actually put it in actionable steps to accomplish dreams and goals that you can continue to commit the same sin, but so as long as you pray to God, everything should be cool. God is not dumb. Please stop playing with God. Um, these preachers are misleading us. I honestly meet people be like, well, if you don't believe in Christianity, you must be from the devil. I'm not from the devil. I'm not of a religion, especially not any Abrahamic religion. I am very spiritual. Um, I think my, my energy and my essence, my temple is connected to God. And I think if we stop saying, oh, Christian is Christian is so many people use it as an excuse to hide their maliciousness, to hide their unclean spirits. As a spiritual person, you know that your vessel has to be clean and empty for God to come into you and for you to serve God. And another thing, another reason why, well, the actual reason instead of another, the actual reason why I'm a spiritual person is because I'm an artist um, and going through acting classes and stuff. We are taught to empty ourselves and forget about our problems and give ourselves to characters. Now that's a whole nother conversation that we can go into. 
how, you know, some people have said that when you're like that, you can allow certain demons and entities to overtake your body, your essence or whatever. But I have a moral compass, have integrity about me. And I think that everybody should have this independent notion when it comes to spirituality, instead of saying, I'm going to be a sinner and I'm going to go to church and the pastors is going to do all the work and tell God I forgive him and I love him. You guys in the congregation of Larry Reed, T.D. Jakes, Lamar Whitehead, and so many others are just as guilty as them. Just because you're not in the pulpit does not mean that you're not guilty. You definitely are. They said, did not own your own your own time offline. Research the connections, Larry Reed, Bishop Whitehead, Bishop Jordan. I definitely will. Thank you so much for that. So make sure you guys like this video, subscribe to the channel. I talk about any and everything from pop culture, celebrity news, and ratchet social media. Much love. Appreciate you guys. Leave any comments below or any information that you guys would like for me to research below, and I will get right to that. Okay. Thank you. Game night. Let's be fucking.